We are back on the road to City Hall speaking with Michael Cordiello, the president of ATU Local 1181, which represents school bus drivers and matrons and has just announced a strike for Wednesday. Also with us, a member of the union's executive board, Rene Jean-Louis. And uh, Rene, you have, um, you've done different things over the last 40 years in, in this industry. What kind of a person does it take to be a matron or a driver, dealing in some cases with, with special needs children? Okay, practically you have to be you have to be care. You have to care about the kids, okay? And they do care about you also, mm -hmm. because we, to them, they feel that we are like parents to them. Mm -hmm. From picking them up in the morning and bringing them to school and picking them up in the afternoon and bringing them back home. So, as a matter of fact, they treat us like, you know, they are their parents, mm -hmm. because uh, special need kids, they really do need special attention. In, in, in some cases, I mean, they can be hard to deal with, right? They can yes, be somewhat disruptive. Way, they can way, be, yes, in a yes, yes, you get all that also. But mm -hmm. as I tell you, we deal with them as we're, we're dealing with our kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so we even tell the parents that when they are on, with us, they are our kids. And the parents feel fine with that because they feel comfortable. Their kids are safe with us. O over the years, have you seen people who really just weren't right for this business, who sort of come and they do it for a while and they decide maybe it's not for them? Of course, yeah, mm -hmm. some people do leave, yes. I understand, some people do leave, but most of the time they do stay because they make, a, how would I say, a, a career out of it to them, yes. Right. Dealing with special kids. And that, that's really what this comes down to in a way is whether or not this can continue to be a career for people um, because without the seniority provisions, um, it's not clear what would it, what would happen to this as a career, right? Uh, absolutely. I think what you'll see happen is uh, you could end up with a low-paying job, and, uh, which uh, leads to transient workers who are making, uh, you know, making less less than average wages. And uh, quite frankly, I think you hit it on the head. It's been a career for our members. We have members that are st here since 1979 still. They're mm -hmm. still working. It takes a special person, and I give. A credit to my drivers and matrons that we represent. They really do care about the kids. They care about getting them to school safely. And safety is the, the main issue here, that EPP provides safety. I, I don't want to go too uh, deep into the weeds. And you know, at some point, we're going to talk with the city and try and get their point of view. But I read this decision, the l and Bus Corporation decision from last year. And uh, you and the city were on the same side. And the city was arguing alongside the union that these EPPs, these seniority provisions, are, in the city's judgment, the best way to provide quality service because these contracts are not just about the lowest price, but the lowest price with acceptable quality service. Is that a fair statement? That is a fair statement. Why did uh, their position change? Uh, well, their position in the court case was just that. What happened is they failed to provide a, a record to prove that, and that's why uh, let, let's start by saying that that L&M case was about a pre-K bid yes. and the award was made saying that they just didn't provide evidence to prove or back their statements. Mm -hmm. That's all they needed to do. That's all they need to do now is provide a record and evidence as to why it's a true statement. Just back up their statements and certainly there's been a, 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 over a 50 year history of the EPPs being around uh, and that certainly would provide evidence uh, to the safety. And, and very important, you, you also tried to sort of close this legal loophole after this court decision by going to Albany, and uh, both houses of the legislature passed it, but Governor Cuomo vetoed it at the request in part of, of Mayor Bloomberg. Where does that put the governor in all of this? That bill was originally introduced by the city of New York, mm -hmm. and we picked it up when they, they kind of walked away from it. And in the letter to, from the mayor to the governor asking him to veto it, it never said it was illegal. What it said is it needs more stringent scrutiny. Mm -hmm. uh, so he never even claimed in that letter to the governor that it was illegal. Mm -hmm. And why did they turn turn their, I, I don't know why they changed their they, They've been flinging around, I know the, the term illegal, but I, as, as I often try to remind my viewers, it's like that is indeed for the courts to decide. So they think it's illegal, you think that it's not we'll go to court and we'll set it, settle it, unless there's some sort of agreement. Are you still hoping for an agreement between now and Wednesday? I, I certainly would welcome any kind of, uh, any kind of, uh, you know, reach out for us to talk to someone. I mean, the mayor said today, this afternoon, that they've reached out for us. We spoke, I spoke with the chancellor for 20 minutes last Monday and with the deputy chancellor about it, maybe an hour on Thursday, and they've never moved off their position while I proposed to them several 
ways that we can possibly resolve it. I mean, are you at an impasse? Are your negotiators we, talking with their attorneys just, or anything? They just stuck on their position, and they, yeah, we're pretty much done. Um, well, I, but we'd open that dialogue, if, but the EPP has to go back into the bid because uh -huh. otherwise, where are we going? You, you were here for, for the last strike. What does it mean for uh, a driver, a matron, a, a, a worker to, uh, to have to go through a strike like this? Well, they, not they like the idea, but they are ready to go as long as they can get the EPP because this is their protection, mm -hmm. okay? When they lose their job, they can follow the job. In that case, without the EPP, that won't happen. So they do worry about it, but they are ready to fight for it whichever way they can. Do you think that the, the bus companies that, who are sort of the, the middleman in all of this, would, would they treat you all fairly, do you think, without the EPP, without the, uh, the seniority provisions? I have no work without it, so I wouldn't know how they will. Okay, fair enough. Yes. We are going to wish you uh, the best of luck, however this comes out. And, of course, we'll be talking with the chancellor later this week, and we'll, of course, be giving a lot of coverage to what happens to the kids and so forth. So um, thank you for explaining your position, and like I said, we'll wish everybody involved the, the best of luck at uh, getting through this. We're going to take a short break now. Straight ahead, we will look at President Obama's tough comments today on yet another debt ceiling fight. Also tonight, our Monday Consultants Corner will weigh in on the push for gun control in Albany. We're back in a minute.